In this first sim, we'll start off nice and easy with some financial ratios. Let's read the prompt. Scroll down to complete all parts of this task. A CPA firm is engaged to audit the year two financial statements of easy peasy. For each financial ratio below, select a reason why the company's calculation of its financial ratio would differ from the industry standard. Consider each row independently. In this problem, we have four ratios. They give us the industry standard and the company's calculation. Then we need to find a reason why there's a difference. And it says to consider each row separately. Then we'll look at each ratio separately, meaning don't use the information in one ratio to analyze another. That makes it easier. Even though there are four ratios, we can solve each one as a separate problem. So don't look at this as one big sim, which can be intimidating. Break it down. Think of each ratio as a short multiple choice question. Also, as you solve each ratio, break it down some more. Analyze one step at a time. It's like eating a pizza. You can take the entire pie and try to shove the whole thing into your face in one ginormous bite. But how do you normally eat pizza? You take one slice and then you eat it one bite at a time. Same thing here. Take that big problem and break it down to a few smaller questions. Then break it down some more and solve one bite at a time. You can do this. Let's show this sim who's boss. <laughs> Starting with asset turnover. Industry standard, 1.1. Company's calculation, 1.5. Comparing these numbers, the company's number is higher. Why is it higher? To figure that out, take the ratio and break it down. Asset turnover equals sales divided by average total assets. Here, the company's number is higher than the industry standard. From a basic math viewpoint, that means either the numerator is higher or the denominator is lower because both of these result in an overall higher number. Here that means either the company had higher sales or it had lower assets. That's what we're looking for. Let's go to our choices. A global recession decreased demand for the industry's products during year two. Think of how this affects sales and total assets. Demand decreased. That means sales decreased. But here's the thing. This explanation is for the entire industry, which includes the company. So it affects the industry and the company the same. If the industry and the company experience the same decrease in sales, then this does not explain why the company's number is higher than the industry's. Next, sales decreased at a greater rate than the industry as a whole during year two. This fixes what was wrong with the first choice. It separates the effect on the industry from the company. It says sales decreased. Let's plug that into our ratio. That doesn't match what we're looking for. Next, collection of accounts receivables slowed during year two. Let's think about this. What happens when we collect on accounts receivable? Let's use a journal entry. Journal entries make things easier to see. When we collect on accounts receivable, we collect cash. <laughs> cash goes up. What's the other side of the entry? Accounts receivable. We collect on accounts receivable. Accounts receivable goes down. Here, collections and accounts receivable slowed. That means we're not collecting cash. This is the opposite of our journal entry. Then cash isn't going up, it stays low. And accounts receivable isn't going down, it stays high. Now here's the thing. Cash and accounts receivable are both assets. Cash stays low 
means assets stay low. Accounts receivable stays high means assets stay high. They offset each other. Then there's no effect on assets. And they're both assets. There's also no effect on sales. Then there is no effect on asset turnover. That's not what we want. Next, sales are potentially overstated for year two. Sales are overstated, then sales are higher. Plug that into our ratio. That's a match because when sales are higher, asset turnover is higher. First one down. On to profit margin. Industry standard, 0.05. Company's calculation, 0.09. Comparing these numbers. The company's number is higher. To figure out why it's higher, let's take the ratio and break it down. Profit margin equals net income divided by sales. Here, the company's number is higher than the industry standard. That means either net income is higher or sales are lower because both of these make profit margin higher. Let's look at our choices. Warranty reserve is overstated for year two. This is about a warranty reserve. Let's use a journal entry. Journal entries make things easier to see. Generally, when you have a warranty, you record warranty expense and warranty liability. Here, warranty reserve means warranty liability. The warranty liability is overstated. Then warranty expense is also overstated. Warranty liability is a balance sheet item. It does not affect net income or sales. Warranty expense, on the other hand, is an income statement item and affects net income. An overstated expense means a bigger minus, which results in a smaller net income. Let's plug this into our ratio. That's not a match. Next, warranty reserve is understated for year two. This is the opposite of the choice we just did. Remember, warranty reserve just means warranty liability. The warranty liability is understated. Then warranty expense is also understated. A smaller expense means a smaller minus, which results in a higher net income. Let's plug that into our ratio. That's a match. Because when net income is higher, profit margin is also higher. Times interest earned. Industry standard, five. Company's calculation, three. Comparing these numbers, the company's number is lower. To figure out why, let's take the ratio and break it down. Times interest earned equals EBIT divided by interest expense. Note, EBIT stands for earnings before interest and taxes. Here, the company's number is lower than the industry standard. That means either EBIT is lower or interest expense is higher because both of these make times interest earned lower. Let's look at our choices. There are unrecorded liabilities for year two. It's unrecorded. It's not on the books. Then it does not affect our ratios. Next, the company has off-balance sheet liabilities. This is similar to the choice we just did. These liabilities are off-balance sheet. They're not on the books. Then it doesn't affect our ratios. Next, bad debt expense is understated for year two. That means a smaller expense, a smaller minus, which leads to bigger earnings before interest expense and taxes. Plug that into our ratio. That's not a match. Next, the company has significant below market rate loans. When loans are below market rate, that means the company pays a lower interest rate than everyone else. If we have a lower interest rate, then 
we have lower interest expense. Let's plug this into our ratio. That's not a match. Last one. The company has a poor credit rating compared to its competitors. Let's think about this like real life. If someone has bad credit, do they pay a lower or higher interest rate? They pay a higher interest rate because if they have bad credit, they're a bigger risk. So lenders charge a higher rate. Same thing here. The company has a bad credit rating compared to others in the industry. Then the company pays a higher interest rate. If we have a higher interest rate, then we have higher interest expense. Plug that into our ratio. That's a match. Because when interest expense is higher, the times interest earned ratio is lower. Last one, accounts receivable turnover. Industry standard, 12. Company calculation, 10. Comparing these numbers, the company's number is lower. Why is it lower? To figure that out, take the ratio and break it down. Accounts receivable turnover equals sales divided by average accounts receivable. Here, the company's number is lower than the industry standard. That means either sales are lower or accounts receivable is higher because both of these lower accounts receivable turnover. Let's look at our choices. The company's credit policies are more stringent than the industry's. Think of how this affects sales and accounts receivable. This talks about the company's credit policies. When the company lends money to others, that's accounts receivable. If the company is super strict about giving credit, then it only gives credit to people with awesome credit scores. That's a smaller pool of people. That means a smaller accounts receivable than the industry. Plug that into our ratio. That doesn't match. Next, allowance for doubtful accounts is possibly understated for year two. Allowance for doubtful accounts is a contra. It runs contra to accounts receivable. When the allowance is understated, it's lower. That's a smaller contra, a smaller minus. Then accounts receivable is higher. Plug that into our ratio. That's a match. Because when accounts receivable is higher, accounts receivable turnover is lower. Here's the completed answer grid. That's it, we're done. In this sim, we had several ratios to analyze. Initially, the sim looked like one big ugly chart. Just remember, break it down. Take that big sim and think of each ratio as a smaller problem. Then it's not as intimidating. And as you solve each ratio, break it down some more. Think it through one bite at a time. Just like we did here. All right, we're off to a great start. We got more sims headed your way and more simple tactics to getting points on the sims. So stay with me. I'm Liz Cho with SNAP CPA.